Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So. Okay. So we get uh, an update from K, uh, from AI two folks within Core nineteen data set, and finally there are like some good positive changes. They're breaking a lot of things, but they're breaking the old like. I would say unnecessary code. Oh, I mean, like right now it's unnecessary code since all of the JSON files that we will need to kind of parse through are directly in the metadata with relative process. So instead of just constructing, doing all of this, a lot of areas where you can, you know, make a mistake, a bug or something. Now, now it's missing. Now it's all on the AI2 side. And uh, I was looking into our cord pre-processing uh, piece of code for a lot of areas to like refactor it. So I kind of start working on it. So I will need to, for people who are also working on this to coordinate a little bit. I'm coming from the more of a like structural changes of just simply not do, you know, for loops in terms of how you process this, but more of a, just just create functions that take a record from metadata and do something with it. And then the rest of the code we were a factor. So I spent a couple hours trying to refactor it today. Mm -hmm. um, how do we want to coordinate so that we're not um, okay. we don't have a duplication of efforts here? So what I need from you, like do you already like use GitHub repo for that? If it's your personal repo, it's fine as well. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have um, privileges to um, push things to the the common, the yeah. core common it's, repo. It's still fine. Like, so please send me your like repo you're working on. So sure. I just simply want to see your changes. Most likely, okay. again, what I'm working on, like, will be on different areas. Uh, yeah, what I'm doing at the good. moment is just trying to make. Brandon's code work with the new format. And so I'm trying to change as little of his code as possible. So hopefully your stuff is just more structural. Um, yeah. So yeah. again, like if, if you see what Brandon did, for example, there are like uh, duplication in terms of um, like the logic of the function of just simply processing, uh, I forgot what's the name of the function, like data frame or something. Uh, there are like three times doing the same thing and just copy pasting. Yeah. Right. So you know, it's like if it's abstract, you know, if the key is an abstract, if key in the title, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so all of that, that was really hard be... to debug. Ex exactly. The thing is, I'm essentially just okay. It should be one function. Right. The the whole logic is, I'm redoing all of this essentially like from scratch, kind of creating. So what I will need from you essentially, whatever you're doing, I will just see the changes that you okay. made and then just, again, you know, I'll package them in a more of a like proper function that will be applied to data frame. And then I still need to figure out like how to make effective way, how to kind of package that so we could kind of pipe it in directly into Elasticsearch effectively. Uh, I, I was hearing complaints from people who are using our Elasticsearch that some du like there are duplicate sentences, not core UIDs, but like the sentences themselves. So something was, I think, was broken in the at the point of how we update Elasticsearch from V6, V8, etc. So maybe some duplicates were created. Again, not on the level of. I mean, just like some sentences get ingested a couple of times or something like this. Again, I'll, I'll figure out, I mean, I'll take care of that as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, so far it's great changes in terms of like, we were like, again, yeah, thinking, talking about this, restructuring the code base, et cetera, right, for quite a while. And now finally there is also this huge trigger of metadata, like breaking changes in the yeah. metadata. So everything should be done from, not from scratch, but just kind of like, again, all of those like logic were done from, you know, from the start. So I think we're in a good spot of, of getting into like next phase. So there is like a huge necessity of it. We can't just keep 
reusing the the old like copy paste old routines we actually need to kind of like oh you know everything is more mature now so we need to be more mature as well so i'm happy about this yeah that's cool. about it i, I will, think i'll let the... you know where where i um upload my code mm -hmm. on github okay Thank and you, uh, i have a question are you guys working on the same uh, latest version of uh, core 19 so i'm i'm jumping like uh what v v19 but i think again like all of the like after that the changes will be just incremental um so i, I so, so i will need to talk offline with you regarding like this mm -hmm. logic of updates uh because uh i was going through change log for core 19 data set and they always like report okay we added like 100 papers for this collection removed like five and stuff like this Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have any logic of removing anything from Elastic, right? Like nobody was doing anything. No. We'll just. So, so my my question is more like, uh, Marie, I think you're working on uh, V12 version. On I the... was until today. <laughs> yes, this is exactly this is exactly my question. So now you. Ah, okay. To V15, <laughs> right? 15. Yeah, yeah. What I'm, what I've been doing today. It's already is... 19. Ah, it's already 19. 19? Yes. Yes. I mean, it was 15, then they skipped a couple of versions, and now it's 19. Uh, I think what, what happened is, right, they introduced breaking changes. People start quick, I mean, people start uh, redoing their pipelines and complaining. And obviously, they found some bugs here and there. So, again, this is the time, just, like, we shouldn't rush to grab and kind of fix our things. We just need right now, I think this is the right time to refactor everything. So we accommodate the breaking changes and then all of the small changes will follow as well. And uh, we like we need to do right now everything so that we just simply accommodate I know, a few parameters, a few if statements, if something will, will, will be changed here and there. So, and I think we'll probably, I think we will need to re, like re, re, recompute everything from scratch to kind of start from new things and not to have any tales from all the versions of, of, of metadata, et cetera, even though it will take time probably. <coughs> but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also what will help me as well, who kind of got what, because Brandon did, insane amount of work like again uh, like huge respect for him for do, especially doing it early on when you don't know what people need etc but there are multiple model like sky spacey models that got you know we do computations for them but i'm not sure that that is actually used anywhere down the pipeline for example like some of the sky spacey models for terms like I have no idea how they are relevant to like and en name entity recognition. I have no idea how they're relevant to like any people who are using the search down the line. So mm -hmm. we should kind of coordinate, I guess, what we actually, so what I wanted to have is very like, so elastic search with all of the sentences, right? I mean, like, let's consider just sentence level for a second and then we could again use multiple like spacey models on top of it, right? And compute them and again also put them into Elasticsearch index. But the whole point why, right? Yeah. So uh, I, like, I, 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 I think it should be done in a different way. I think original source from uh, Core 19 should be placed in Elastic in MongoDB. So in Elastic, you can search in MongoDB, you can actually quickly get content <laughs> retrieve retrieve mm -hmm. and uh, after uh, all these embeddings we should place uh, separately yeah. by, and different uh, by chord id and uh, sentence id and uh, yeah in, in, in terms of elastic search it doesn't make much sense to put sentences in elastic search as a part uh, items because elastic search if it's based on frequency of items most of the words uh, regardless <laughs> of function words that you have plenty of the same function word you may have mm -hmm. the same function word multiple times in a, in a sentence but actually this content word you have mostly once uh, so to have a 
in elastic search to have an item as a sentence doesn't make much sense. A document or section, okay. But then a sentence, I don't think so. It's it's. Mm, yeah, I agree, but but still, it can be useful if you want uh, actually to find. Okay, of, all sentences it, with yeah. similar sentences. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it makes sense, and I think it's in the end it can be valuable because uh, we'll get uh, some kind of you know yeah filtering yeah 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 okay of course so it, 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 it's extra resources from us but uh, I think it's a way to go just to split like original part to do preprocessing only of uh, original documents from uh, uh, court nineteen and after actually to do. It, it it's research specific. It's uh, model specific. Mm -hmm. So all these embeddings should be actually stored separately, mm -hmm. because people can come with new ideas, with new models, and they can kind of add all this information to our collections. Well, the thing is, I actually think even like I haven't tested out like how quickly when the model is already trained, and then you just need to process quickly sentences with Spacey. So I don't know how quickly that works but i think all of that could be definitely done somewhere like downstream so let's say specific task team like a lab right they query that's essentially they they need a specific collection of articles let's say it's heart disease or something right mm -hmm. they pull it out retrieve it let's say from mongodb so i mean they do query search elastic kind of performs quickly because it's you know optimized for just this queries yeah. then they retrieve it from mongodb now they have again sentences sections like all of that in like we need to come up with some structure because i'm not sure that when brandon did it initially there was all of this necessity so he could do the, the right choices there so those that information is retrieved then essentially the researcher within task team kind of like oh you know what i want to use this type of model like spacey model so he he downloads the artifact of that model now we need to come up with some solution not relying on other storages because but like for, let's say s3 bucket where it's stored get deleted and now you know it's broken so we could i mean we'll deal with it uh, it's it's a separate question so the researcher kind of uh, downloads the artifacts to run spacey model on, on this retrieve from mongodb data create some results and here is you know let's say a published data set and then they could upload it to dataverse for example boom so very simple pipeline the flow of information goes on you know in in, in one direction uh, then if it's something that is useful and should be replicated we could kind of like oh you know if if this type of model or engrams or something is useful to everybody then we we come up with some you know kind of put the push that code upstream and again we can store it in mongodb as well alongside the raw data not the raw data the article data so something like this uh, so definitely this um, uh, architecture questions are uh, important to to figure out at, at this stage yeah and i really believe all all extracted entities should be stored both in elastic and in mongodb because so what, what's the benefits of having it in like an elastic like is anybody using like search with for those entities or yeah, you, you can search uh, uh, for uh, for specific uh, entities from specific <laughs> ontologies and uh, you can uh, actually add uh, you, you can extract all uh, uh, related entities also by searching for some keywords so uh, ah, okay so are we talking about like those named entities yes right ah, okay I agree on that as well. I just like, we also have some of the like numeric embeddings. I'm not sure it's, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's useless in elastic setting. Yeah, but yeah, it definitely. it's useless, but, but for uh, like named entities, it, it makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, I agree. And, uh, infrastructure, uh, I, <laughs> I'm thinking now should actually uh, be like open API based and uh, we should just create methods for um, querying different systems, but in like unified space. Yeah, I will explain mm -hmm. you my idea. So I already have experiments. And uh, mm -hmm. when I saw a release of a uh, new version of Court 19, which is completely not compatible with previous one. So I quickly compiled my own server. So I have like super server 
the form and uh, I started calculation of V12 of previous version and now it's running <coughs> for like eight hours and well it's more or less okay uh, load is like like one one and a half in average so I'm expecting <laughs> if I will be lucky in like uh, probably 40 hours I will get completely new collection of all embeddings and uh, mm. all entities and it will be really clean because actually I started from scratch for all uh, documents from core 19 mm. okay so this is our kind of reference to understand what Brandon did and if Brandon is missing something mm. And uh, meanwhile, you guys can, can work on on, on uh, 19, right? So it's <laughs> yeah. version 19. So that's fine because it's different. But uh, to update something, we need kind of stable version, <laughs> previous version, I would say. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, but uh, because um, Anton, you, uh, you mentioned that you, you would like to, like, to adapt the architecture so to, to make it easier and not to reuse everything that Brandon uh, did in his data frame. Mm. Not, no, not, uh, not exactly. What I mean is just like uh, the way right now that our notebook, I mean, right now it was Python notebook to process everything, right? Which yeah. means essentially it's a procedural type of approach. But now we are, we're going to package all of this as more of a like software code, right? Yeah. Etc. And uh, since it's it's not about like having all of this like you know Python notebook cells and then you kind of you know playing with them, so th there is I mean there is a lot of redundancy in the code because you simply it was like one cell and then you see another cell is doing exactly the same thing because it was copy pasting again typical Python notebook development. But now when the goal was to kind of package it in the just Python script to run it like all of this redundancy is like apparent and then you kind of like okay so where for example like i'm, I'm changing the named recognition uh, pieces and for example there is like a methods in it nlp or something and then i start like changing it but nothing changes i'm like what's going on and then it turns out there is hard-coded version in another place etc so okay. this is type of refactoring i'm talking about just you know cleaning up this yeah. stuff package everything into functions and then the moment when you start again, uh, like that, like that logic of checking if the record has the attached JSON file and stuff like this. The moment when you get this after this, the only thing you need as an input is just simply a function how to process that rec like that JSON file, and so on. So a lot of things start getting into place at least in my head uh, that. Oh, wait a second, we're not limited to spaces because like this whole approach should be like outside of, for example, like current chosen spacey vectors and embeddings. Because I'm pretty sure we could some other NLP kind of, uh, we will definitely try other approaches as well, right? But the logic of simply, okay, here is metadata in a data frame and then you need quickly go through and process and add something like new embeddings, for example. And then upload it. It's like that. That code shouldn't change much, unless yeah. you know metadata changes. Yeah, yeah but, but I would say uh, there are also bugs because uh, what I found after people started to complain about duplicates, mm -hmm. I checked uh, random uh, sentences, and what I found, for example, entities repeated twice with the same mm -hmm. uh, entity ID, like UML uh, ID twice. It's not really what we want, right? So it's a uh, mm. problem with quality, and uh, we need to figure out what what went wrong. And uh, apparently, on uh, it's on Brandon's side. I don't think it's something we, uh, we uh, upload to Elastic, but uh, we have to find original files, uh, original entities, and check if uh, actually the problem uh, is mm. there. <laughs> I will send you some examples. It's quite yeah. interesting. Okay. Uh, no, just. Uh, to make it more clear to, for, for for Bill and Mary, so that they can keep going with now V19, uh, and in which direction uh, this this let's say Brandon type of notebook should be refractor. 
so that uh, they are married. It's, it's clear to you what is what we are now supposed to do with uh, with random scope. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Oh, Sorry, you go, Mary. Um, I looked online. I can somebody send me the link for the version nineteen of the data because I wasn't able to find it. Like version nineteen is actually that what you have now on Kaggle. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just grab it off Kaggle. Um, and is there no this change the, log for it? Because I'm not seeing anything that changed since the, okay, the okay. version 15 came out this morning. Yeah, I was I, version 19 didn't sound right to me either. I don't remember seeing a 19. I thought I thought I saw a 15. I'm gonna get back yeah, to it. So there was it was 12, 13, 14, 15, and then there was definitely 19. At least I, I don't know. Which version? So which version are you doing refactoring on, uh, Anton? So I'm essentially I'm doing it. Uh, 15 and 19 will be, I think, like some incremental changes. The breaking changes are the that 15 version 15. Yeah. And so you said you were refactoring Brandon's um, pre-processing a little bit. Which which version of data are you basing that refactor off of? 19 or you know, you're, you're just kind of packaging stuff. So it doesn't really matter. So, um, the thing is like, it, uh, it's not like I'm refactoring. Essentially what I'm doing is like alongside I'm, I'm start everything essentially building that process from scratch. No, well, that's from scratch, gotcha, but gotcha. you know, just gotcha. kind of like, okay, here is what, what we need to do. Just create this, I mean, import like meta, whatever, like meta TSV file. Uh, metadata so CSV, right and then i'm kind of just following okay what brandon did essentially what i'm doing is like uh, that documentation that brandon did essentially mm -hmm. right the logic of it since again it's it's that thing is not changing right but everything else is just in terms of implementation i'm just simply doing okay so here is data frame You're just and then like we want to parallelize things right yeah so just kind of so like modular Exactly, exactly. So I'm just trying to yeah. kind of like, I did, like yesterday, identify just like this module, the gate. And then I'm seeing, okay, this one module takes care of this, 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 like three, three cells in a notebook immediately. And I'm like, okay, so why, why are we doing like this? You know, uh, I mean, it took care of all of this redundancy in the code. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So this is what I do. So in, in a sense, if you guys do any changes within this, like actual logic of processing, I mean, like, taken care of, okay, here is I'm reading the, this column, here is I'm in, in, in like reading the JSON file for this specific record, do something with it. So I'm not right now touching that code much, right? Gotcha, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, so what we, do do everything. what we do will fit right into it. Yes, and that's actually do, even if it's in like in this redundancy way, then I'll, I'll figure out like which areas to kind of package into methods. And my goal is essentially to, uh, because we still need to parallelize this process, right? And the way it's done now, it's definitely not the way to go. And it, I mean, it's it's not possible to do it in that way. But I found multiple approaches how to do it on a pandas like data frame level. And uh, the whole idea is again, you have your data frame, then you specify the function how to process specific record, and then you attach a library and through specific methods you call all of this and it just simply splits pandas and all of those chunks that brandon was doing manually right without yeah, like, optimization for this like all of that is i mean there is already code written by like the right people for for doing all of that for for us it will be just like you know call of one method specific method that will does everything for us and then i think we will have much smaller in the terms of size code base and yeah. uh, you know much cleaner and then we'll start thinking about test and coverage for it because right now it's like okay do we know doing the good thing or not and so on especially when you do all of this safe to pickle read from people etc yeah yeah. Sure. Like, yeah there's a yeah, lot definitely. of duplication uh, yeah now. there's there's a lot of yeah duplication of effort so this was on Kaggle right now um, the latest version, the 2025-12, like released on 512, is this 19? Yeah. So the for me, I have 19, 19, 19 changes this week. Please read carefully. So 19 hours ago, there was 19 version. 
I don't see oh, that. Where, where is that released? Okay, let me. I'm I'm posting in Slack. Teams. If you ever like switch back and forth between versions on on Kaggle, let's say if you wanted to go back to like version nine or something, then it it could kind of stick you to the version that you were, you know, switching manually from. Oh, so you can use this to access different versions here? Yes. Gotcha. Oh, another thing, right? Uh, we like. Right now, again, I'm, I would just like, go in directly to source. Essentially, kind of okay. What what I would do if I started from scratch, you know, and not from scratch, like from like today only, right? Then I will go to Kaggle, download it from there. But since you know we already need to do the right way, uh, we need to build like again a dataverse. Like the like, do we have the algorithm, like the code to pull from Kaggle? And upload it to Dataverse, or it was done manually. No, yeah, we, we have a code. Do we have it? We have a code, yeah. We okay, can do then. Again, we need to kind of, again. I have yeah, only problem, that but but the problem, and this is why I said uh, it's not possible to download previous version. Uh, if you'll try link that was in in uh, our infrastructure, it doesn't work anymore. So mm -hmm. probably there is kind of temporary link. Probably uh, you can if you'll go back uh, in Kaggle interface, you can download mm -hmm. something, but you don't know exactly if it, if it's corresponding to uh, this version. Mm -hmm. so are, we, are we versioning? Uh, sorry, you go, Anton. No, go ahead, go. I was just going to ask: Are we versioning the data set in um, on our side somewhere in Dataverse? Yeah, yeah. Like, are we are we versioning Corn ourselves? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just wondering. Yeah, so regarding that, I think like, because for Kaggle, what I know the uh, like if, if you do like download link from the website, it's actually like for, for your, I mean, you need to be logged in into account, right? So I assume that it creates some token that maybe the token expired also, then that link yeah. that was pulling directly from like under the hood, maybe just token expired. That's why the link doesn't work anymore as well. It's possible, but it seems it just uh, stored somewhere on uh, AVS. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, uh, this is where oh, the raw storage yeah, is. But, but AVS, it's really temporary, you know, it's, there is no persistent ID that, uh, or mm. URL that will be persistent. So it can change any time. Well, again, that, that's what I'm t talking about. Like, so we probably need to use, like, again, Kaggle API to access it, but then the question is authentication, et cetera. So, I mean, <laughs> There are a lot of things like that needs to be refactored as well. But let's like, I propose to kind of again, focus on uh, again, just like core 19 and so can we like just upload like manually for that override that pipeline? So in Dataverse we have version like 19 or maybe all of this version. Do we need to store all of the previous versions? We should. Well, I mean like for example, yeah. V12, yes. But do we need V15? Can we just go to V19? You know, the problem now, because people are even asking about version six, seven, eight. I don't know why, what they do, but... <laughs> I don't know yeah. why as well. So that's why, like, I want to uh, cut the cord and uh, just start, like... Guys, the problem you. is that, for instance, Dylan, Mary, and, and uh, also Janos uh, have uh -huh. started to work first towards uh, V12. And now they are switching to V19. Skipping yeah. over V15, and we don't have ten persons more to take care uh, for those uh, in between versions. I mean, like, because for all of the versions, actually, you need to adapt the Brandon's notebook more or less. Refactor the yeah, yeah. Okay. So the this question is what Slava was talking about: you... stable version. I propose yeah. V19 a stable version. Let's I that's, 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 what I was, that's, that's what I was asking. I was saying let's just skip over twelve and fifteen and just let's focus on refactoring at nineteen and then yeah. maybe work because, out a better way of a better automated way of pulling <laughs> from Kaggle into like somewhere because I feel like getting the data from Kaggle isn't like, you know, some way to automate it into our side and then version it on our side and then we have a central data repository. Don't we 
have that? Do we have like a central place where we can download the data set? On our well, so Dataverse is our yeah, storage they, yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, cool. Just curious. So, um, so yeah, I, I agree with you, Anton. Let's just get stable at 19. So we also have uh, all um, all stuff from from um, I don't, I believe from version eight and nine uh, in JSON in the, stored in Dataverse. So it's not like original <laughs> collection, but something already pre-processed and mm. Randall, uh, already <laughs> stored this in Dataverse. So in a sense, we have V9 is a stable version of this pre-breaking changes, right? Yeah. And now V19 will be our next one. I mean, like this, this, this new. <laughs> so then, Mary, maybe you and I should jump. Like, after this, we can talk about how we want to split up doing that. Yeah. OK, one, one pressing question I have is I downloaded the data set from Kaggle, clicking the button mm. this morning. How do I know which version that is? Oh, so do you, do you, uh, you still have the browser open? Because it shows you on the on Kaggle, if you look right, like underneath COVID-19 Open Research Dataset Challenge, next to Allen AI Institute for AI, it'll tell you the version number there. So uh, also, you so right can now, validate. Right now, 20 hours ago, version 19. OK, then that yeah. means that all of my, I downloaded this all shit did i download it last night oh fuck uh so, all right Mary, i need to figure out which version is, I, in, in, your, in your downloaded file uh, mm -hmm. there is metadata.readme okay. and it, oh. if you scroll i think it will be at the bottom will be kind of like the latest change log okay great or you can um, just like dip, dip the big uh metadata file or something then in that case if we can we make, can we commit to, even if they come out with like five or six new versions, can we commit to just working on 19? Because if we keep pushing it further and further and further, I, I feel like I can't keep up with processing yeah. an yeah. entire that's version. That's what we're talking about. I think, I, I think okay. that's what we're agreeing to right now, yeah. All right, Because cool. the only reason we're jumping forward to 19, I think, is because it's such a massive change. Otherwise, we would have just stuck with 12 for a little while. Got it. <laughs> I think. So yeah, I think we're gonna just stick with making sure that we can refactor and get everything working on 19. And like Anton said, like make sure that things are sustained, more sustainable moving forward. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, we can talk on Slack about yeah. how we want to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can add me to that repo you create so I can see what your changes are and I can see what Anton does. And then maybe I can, if you're focusing on like getting it to work with the actual data frame, he's focusing on like modularizing it. I can look at getting that to work with like the different levels of embeddings or something. Okay, um, and I'm I will uh, try to to bring one person more on that uh, so that uh, yeah because I think we have like or three different notebooks one person more so that you are not overloaded uh, with refactoring for the entire doc uh, level because Great. still I, I I haven't heard from Janos so maybe I don't know I, I need to ask him. Once again, uh, yeah. This so, Dylan, Mary, quick questions. You guys use Python notebooks, or are you also comfortable with just doing Python code, like a Python script? Um, it's way? just easiest for me to work in a notebook, especially okay. with data yeah. frames. Usually, I, usually yes. I develop in a notebook. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, then again, it's fine. It's just like I'm more like I'm kind of coming from the end how we put it into like more of a Python code. So that's yeah. why I think like again we'll just stick whatever we were doing before. Right now we're fi fixing fixating our eyeballs on version 19, the mm -hmm. latest one, right? And again, do your Python notebook development, and I'll, I'll just again I'm considering this as a more of a, like this proof of uh, that the pipeline works, right? And then I will just kind of see and how modularize it, et cetera. So that will be yeah, probably the, the best way uh, of going forward. So essentially, I, I will be the guy who will merge in all of the stuff you guys okay. do into one place. Does it make sense? Yep. Yeah, because you want, I okay. develop in a notebook, but then you definitely want to make sure you modularize it. Like I know this Brandon's, mm -hmm. like Brandon's, that script could be a little better at being more portable, but yeah. Cool. That's it for me. Okay, sounds good. 
so there are some questions more i mean in terms of organization in general so i think we covered everything in terms of uh, v19 and it's the most important thing now all the other things like semantic search whatever it, it can wait well it's all of that stuff we still like, need to think about again architecture right so the more like all of this stuff will put all of the data somewhere right and then from that point on it's independent of what we do over yeah. here like what yeah. what should be done there so again people yeah. who are focusing on that could you know should continue thinking exactly and uh all of exactly. yeah good okay so uh well, what remains uh yeah i mean i would like to thank you and uh yeah i wish you luck <laughs> with your notes <laughs> thanks mm. yeah and so and have a nice day evening morning night and uh, yeah and the uh, next uh, call will be uh, at the weekend uh, uh sunday saturday saturday i think the same time uh, yeah, saturday you... works for me okay i mean like uh, otherwise i i'll record uh, everything and then we can talk on slack uh, when 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 you are free so that's... cool mm -hmm. okay so once again thank you and uh, good luck thanks Yep. All right. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.